Hello, welcome to JLo Artist YouTube channel. Today we'll be doing some drawing with graphite. So get out your pencils, your cotton swab, kneaded eraser, anything that you think you need to draw with. Have it right handy. And let's draw together. Remember, art makes life better. Thanks for being here today though. Drawing with me. Sometimes it's really good to have some really good drawing paper. So this paper that I've got here is quite smooth. Still has a little bit of tooth to it. Tooth meaning that it's a little, a little textured. You can feel a little bit of the grain to it, but not too much. The smoother you get, the easier it is to get details. So first thing we want to do is as we're looking at our paper, we want to establish the size that we want to do this at. And we want to take up the entire piece of paper, okay? And we're going to take the, his little backside and put it right, kind of right to the edge, about right in there. If you make a little mark there, that's going to be his little backside. And then you, you got to leave room for his ear. So there's got to be an ear up in there. You can just make a little mark and just say, this is where I want his ear to go. And then his, his paw is going to almost touch that bottom edge down in there. That's how big we want to make that. And so in doing so, you look through there, about half of his body, if you go about half from his ear to, the, to his paw in the front there, you go about halfway down, that's about where his, his jowl is, his chin. We can make this kind of circular shape and just say that's where his head is going to go. And that's about as big as we want to make that head. And from there now you can say, well, okay, where I first established his ear is a little, little too far to the right. I'm going to have to move it over just a little bit. Just do a little triangle shape right there. I'll try to draw a little, a little darker so you can see it a little easier. I normally wouldn't draw this dark. His other ear is, is kind of a triangular oval. But if you kind of come down off of his head just a little bit, it kind of rounds out. You say, okay, there's his, his ear, and it almost is level with his backside. So if you come to his backside and say, well, that's where his backside is, his ear is almost there. Not quite. There's an ear. And if I take the space between the bottom of that circle and, and his foot and I cut it in half, and I said, well, that's about where his body goes. So he's got his little arm is going to come up here about like this. So there's an arm, just a little oval. There's one. The other one, just about even with his the circle of his head, if you come down. We may have to adjust this a little bit, too. There's the other paw. Of course, we, we'll probably have to adjust it a little bit anyway, but... And then just get in the other curves that are in there. And you got it. That's our proportioning. And we want to take up that much of our paper. A good design touches or comes close to touching three of the four sides of your, of your paper. And the grass and all that stuff, we'll get that with our cotton swabs. We don't even need to worry about drying that right now. Our emphasis area is probably his face. And if you look at the angle of his ears, that's going to be the angle of his eyes, his nose, and his mouth. So same angle. So if you come through with your pencil and you just kind of find that angle, and then you can come in and say, well, Right below the center of his ear, right in there is an eye. And you just kind of throw that in. And just angled off is the other eye. And it's inside his ear. So if this is the tip of his ear and we come straight down, it's over on this side. And go ahead and just draw little circles don't use the tip of your pencil. Remember, we're drawing with the side of our pencil. That way it stays on the surface. 
And then here, where our circle is, just above our circle is his nose, and his nose is almost a kind of a rectangle. It's got a little bit of a of a point to it. And if you come straight down from the edge of his eye, so if this is his eye, and you think that's in a pretty good spot, and then you come straight down from there, that's about where the edge of his nose goes. And you can just draw that edge in there. There's his nose. A little jowl that sticks out there. It's kind of this square kind of shape. If you if you think about kind of almost triangular, it's about right in there. And again, we can adjust this as we go. This is not not meant to be perfect yet. We're we're getting our point of reference. That part of his circle is kind of cut off over there, so I cut that off just a little bit. This is all called proportioning. Trying to get all the sizes. That nose needs to go just a little bit larger, a little wider. So now I'm just making slight adjustments and just kind of looking at everything, making sure that everything lines up like it should. You know, that you've got the right angles. Everything's kind of lining up where it should go. And you're always using the side of your pencil. Remember, you don't want to use the, the tip because you'll grind it into the surface and then you won't be able to erase. Once you have it drawn the way you'd like it, then erase what is not necessary. Now with the side of our pencil, we'd like to get some, some values in. So I'm just going to go through and look at the darkest areas. Some of those really dark areas are uh, just his markings. This is a little German Shepherd puppy, so he's got those distinctive markings. So I can go through with the side of my pencil and just throw in some of that dark area, some down his ear, and don't be afraid to leave those edges very soft and fuzzy. In other words, you don't want a sharp edge, you don't want all your lines to be even. That'd be a little spontaneous with those. I'm just looking at the shapes of the darkness and drawing in those shapes. And uh, a lot of drawing is, is the way it feels. And there's a, when I say feels, I'm talking about that inner eye that you've got, that intuition, if you will. You kind of know what it should be like and you think, well, I'm not sure if that's really why, but it feels right. So you got to trust that. Or the, the Zen way of drawing, I guess. Sort of the Jedi kind of thing. Trust your feelings, Luke. And again, look how far back I am with my pencil. Way in the back. That way, I'm not pressing hard. I don't want to press hard yet. That will eventually come. And I don't want real tight details yet. That too will come. All I'm trying to do is get some little dark areas 
And I don't want to draw a line around everything. Remember how that's not desirable here. A lot of this we can smear with our cotton swab. So just get in the darkest areas. And if you think, well, that needs to go a little darker, we're going to layer in a, quite a bit of darkness in there. But right now, just try to get the shapes of those. This is going to help us get our proportions as well. And as we draw along, it'll help us to see what is off, what we need to change. I really haven't worried about some of those sketchy lines that I put in there to begin with because we're going to use those anyway. Got to put graphite in there anyway. Look at the relationships of the shapes of darkness to things like um, like the proportions of his legs. Like this little dark area right here comes down and kind of, if, if you were to continue that on, it would match up with his leg there. And this one here kind of comes to a point right there. So little things like that help you to get your proportions. It's one of those techniques that we learn. This is a very fast way of drawing. Once you're finished, then just go along with your kneaded eraser and clean up any edges or anything that you, you feel like you don't really need or that might be a little distracting to you. All this is right on the surface and is easily changed. His eye is quite dark except there's a little shine in his eye. And as you do that, keep that little shine going there. Don't 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 put any graphite into that shine on either side. And I like to take my kneaded eraser and pinch it down. If there's anything in there, I want to get rid of it right now. I want it nice and clean and bright. Now it's time to make any adjustments. And again, you'll you'll see it and you'll go, oh, okay, that feels like I need to make this adjustment. I need to change that a little bit. So you have two options at this point. You can go ahead and start smearing if you want, or you can take your 6B and get some really dark darks going on in there. Last time I think we smeared early, 
Um, this time I think I'm going to try the whole dark thing. Look, I'm going to I'm going to take my six B here now. I'm just going to go in. I'm going to start with the eyes and kind of work my way out from the eyes. I'm just going to go in and, and just put in some really dark dark areas. Notice now I'm at my tip and I'm just grinding it in. Little circles, little circular uh, strokes here. You can go back and forth as well. The little circular ones are a little easier to control and they give you a nice soft edge. Want to keep those little shines going on in his eye. Remember that we've still got to blend this, and so you don't need to go everywhere, just where the darkest darks are. And I'm really giving that a little bit of pressure so that my darks really come out dark. Because I've already I've already done my proportioning, I've already looked at it and said, okay. The eyes go where the eyes go, and the mouth is where the mouth goes. So I'm not afraid of making some of those areas dark. There's some subtle darknesses in the eye that are really hard to see. And sometimes, even if you can't see them, you just kind of guess. You say, well, it's got to look like this. There's got to be a pupil. Just because you understand how animal eyes are, or human eyes, or any kind of eye. So sometimes you're, you're drawing in what you know to be there. That comes with experience. So again, just throw in the darkest areas. If it's really dark, put some pressure on that pencil and get it, get it in there. And some of those other areas, like, like this area between his eye and his, his eyelid there is gray, but I know I can smear that with my cotton swab. So it's kind of anticipatory. You're, you're kind of anticipating what you're going to do next. Don't forget when you're doing fur to use that feathered line. Just a little flick. You can, if it's dark, you kind of press down, give it a little flick off your page. And that'll give that little feathered line Same thing with in the really dark areas. If you want it to look furry, because there's dark and light hairs, even in the dark spaces, there's a little bit of light hair in there. And so knowing that we're gonna blend that, just go ahead and use that feathered line in between. Just do some of this little flecky kinds of things. And just something that maybe you know, but something you need to realize is that animal fur kind of tends to go from between the eyes and it kind of comes out this way and this way on this side so it kind of spreads out and so if your lines are going in that same direction it'll end up looking more like fur so all these lines are going to start going out this way and all these lines are going to go out this way it gives it more of a furry kind of look that pattern Once you get that feathered line down, you can go pretty quick. But it, it is a little bit of practice at first.
especially things like noses and things like that. You kind of got to get those subtle dark, those nuances in there, and then it'll start looking like a nose. Remember that there's a little bit of reflected light on that nostril. So just keep a little bit of light there and then we can blend that in. We can pick up some of that off of his nose and put it into his the bridge of his nose. When you're doing these little flecky lines too, these little feathered lines, remember some short and some long, they don't all have to be the same length. Hair doesn't grow that way. Although it's close. And just kind of zigzaggy kind of lines. Don't don't be afraid to leave some open spaces because that represents that light hair going into the dark side. I will often turn my paper so that my hand doesn't rest on here, otherwise you get that graphite all over your hand. The other thing you can do is take a piece of tracing paper, put that down, and then put your hand on it. That'll keep it from smearing. Remember, a big part of this is keeping it clean. That's kind of tough to do. This little edge that's over here by his, his ear is very light, so just leave it out. When in doubt, leave it out. If it if it's just not light enough and you think, oh, I don't see that edge, don't put it in. You know it's there. Your viewer will know it's there. Let them imagine it as well. You know, give him something to think about. Hopefully you've gotten out of that habit of drawing lines around objects. It's a whole lot more interesting without them. That's part of our goal when creating art, is to make something interesting. Remember, the longer you can keep your audience in your artwork, the more successful you'll be. So make it interesting. The further you get away from the, the face, the face is our emphasis area. And uh, the further you get away from it, the more sketchy you can be. And so I will flip over to this because I can be more sketchy like this than I can with my point. And so sometimes I just want to get some of those dark areas in there. And this is faster. Now 
I'm not saying that everything that should be fast, but as an artist, you really want to get as much information as quickly as you can. Especially if you're drawing from life, because things in life move. They're never going to be the same. So it's good practice from photographs like this, but drawing from life is also important. If you have the opportunity to go to a life drawing class, whether you're drawing people or animals or whatever, it's a good experience. His, uh, his little paws are very soft and very uh, light. And so I'm just, I'm gonna just leave out any edges that I see. Remember, don't be afraid to leave things out. When in doubt, leave it out. You can always draw it back in later. So here uh, on the lower part of the paw, I know there's grass covering up some of that area. And so I'm just kind of picking out some of those darker areas, just putting in a couple little spots here and there. And the rest of that I can get with my cotton swab. It also helps to define that edge without having to put a line around it. If it's a little dark, just add some pressure. Like I say, once we start smearing, we can go back into this and add some more things. <clears throat> There's a lot of really light parts on his face that we're just going to do that with the cotton swab because it's easy to do and it's fast. So once you get to that point, you're ready to start smearing. Just take your cotton swab and you can start anywhere you want to start. I like to start with the eyes because my cotton swab isn't as fuzzy right now. It's a little tighter. And uh, the eye's got a little tighter detail, so I'm going to go in there and just kind of smear a little bit. Stay away from that light. A little spot of light that's in there. Try to stay away from that. And then I'm just going to pick up any of the graphite that I see. And you can also, a little bit of pressure with your cotton swab, you can make it go a little darker, a little more smearing, or you may want to just barely touch it just to get enough value in it. You can even leave a little bit of area out. See how soft and nice that gets? And that graphite, since it's right on the surface, Easily smeared. And that stuff that you've ground down in there, it's going to stay there. Remember, you pick and choose. How much of that do you need to blend? How much stays unblended. It's like your pencil, a lighter touch will blend less, heavier touch blends more. If you want to create an edge, I'm going to zoom into this just so you can see what I'm doing. This edge around his face is really soft. I don't want a line there, so I'm going to get rid of some of that graphite that I put in before with my kneaded eraser. Just clean up that edge a little bit, but I still want a little bit of a soft edge there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cotton swab, I'm going to leave a little bit of space out there, and just put a couple little 
little dashes in there. And that helps to create that little soft edge as it comes down. And it's very light, very soft. But there's that little soft edge now. I didn't have to draw a line around it. If you want a, a few little hairs coming in and out, you can do that too, just to keep it nice and soft. I'm just going to do that kind of all over any place I feel like I need it. And I can come back into this too if I think, oh, I got rid of all that darkness. That's okay. You can come back into it. You can always add more. Don't be afraid to leave spots. Leave things out. If it's light, leave it out. I think sometimes the hazard that we that we uh, get into that pitfall is blending too much. Pick and choose. What do you blend? What do you leave out? This top part of his head is really soft. Just, just leave that, that edge of that cotton swab. Just let it go. Let it be soft. Once you got enough graphite on that cotton swab, you can start doing some more drawing with it. Like right here in the cheek where it's really soft. And now I take my cotton swab and get those little soft edges in. I can do less or more, whatever I feel like I need. That you can do that feathered line with your cotton swab as well. If you take up too much texture, you can always come back in with your kneaded eraser, pull out a little bit of lightness, put some of that linear texture back into it. From the darkness, you can go into the light, and that'll help give that feeling that the light fur is kind of covering up some of the darkness. We can use a little line there too, later on. I think it's kind of therapeutic to draw with your cotton swab. It just is it's so soft. This fur on his leg there too is really soft. So you may want to just leave some of that out as well. You see a little bit of his back leg. This is this little part right there is part of his back leg. And you can choose to put that in or not. I think most people wouldn't know what that is. So they'd look at it as something's wrong with his chest. Something's growing out of it. So it's up to you. You can put it in or leave it out. Hopefully you've got enough graphite on there now that all that light, tiny little light fur you can go back into that with your graphite 
on your cotton swab, just ever so lightly put those soft little tones in. You don't want to forget backgrounds and stuff too, but here the background's going to be a little distracting. But we do need to tell our viewer that he's sitting on grass. Some of those little lines that we've done here, that tells our viewer that he's sitting on grass. But um, once you, you've loaded your cotton swab, you can go in and say, well, oh look, here's some grass back in there. Here's some grass, just, just nice. I mean, you don't have to have it everywhere either, just a little bit to show that your viewer, there's, there's grass back in there. And you just throw in just a couple little spots little V shapes or um, and, and that just that's probably enough really I mean that technique we could come back into it if we wanted to with some pencil and get a little darker areas here and there but for the most part that's really all you need So the edges become very important. These little soft, fuzzy edges. And then where the grass is, you just be kind of spontaneous with that as well. Nobody cares if the grass is going in the right direction. Grass grows that way. And the farther away you get from your subject matter, the less you, you have to do. So, we could probably leave it just like that and everybody understands, oh, that's grass. From here on out, it's just a refinement kind of a, a thing. Is you're just kind of refining your edges, refining your line. It needs to go a little darker in certain areas, so I'm going to go back in with my 6B, darken him up in certain areas. Not everywhere, but just just where I feel like he kind of lost some of that contrast. Those eyes are very dark, so I'm going to really make sure that those pop. And if you like that texture, you just keep that in there. You don't have to blend it at all. We've already blended some. So I can use my pencil now to get some little light edges. A little stronger, they're not quite as soft as, as a cotton swab. But sometimes the fur doesn't doesn't feel soft visually. So to me, this eye, this left eye pops more than the right eye does. But I just went in, put in that contrast and made it really, really dark. That just made that pop. That's what you want. You want that nice contrast. That creates the interest. Contrast can grab your audience. I'm really giving that pencil some pressure. I want that graphite to really rub off on there and get it nice and dark. little edges too will sharpen in some of those line and make it feel more like fur. You do this with, if you're going to do human hair as well, it's kind of how you do it.
trying to play with lighting it's just not picking up all the darks back here there's a shine that's kind of picking up on his nose it's quite dark back here it's about as dark as that eye If uh, in your course of drawing, you put some graphite in those little shines, take your kneaded eraser and pull them out. That's, that's our highlight areas. That's very, very light there. Very few areas get to be that shiny. thing about these kneaded erasers is you just you don't have to rub them at all you just touch it and it'll grab the graphite and bring it back out <laughs> 